I am sitting on the only couch of this tiny dark lit apartment in front of a woman I just met 20 minutes ago when we hear this resounding knock at the door. Star tenses up, petrified. Only them could knock in this assertive, forceful way. In comes two childcare workers with clipboards in their hands. They are here to assess how Star is going to perform the evening routine with her two-year-old son. They start taking frantic notes about how she tidies up her apartment, or doesn't. Dirty laundry on the floor, broken toys, without ever asking her why that is. They then request to see how she bathes her son. And yes, we are three observing in this tiny, closet-like of a bathroom. Every word they write screams, bad mother, incapable mother. During the whole meeting, Star tries to understand what they are saying and does everything they ask, as she knows that they have the power to take away her last child. Her voice strangled by that fear. They checked a box, and that box means neglectful mother, simply because Star has a disability, a diagnosis used against her. I worked with Star and with so many others like her, psychologists who, who did as much as I thought I could. Sometimes it helped, and other times, all I could B is a witness to the gut-wrenching removal of their children, powerless. So when I became a disabled mother, when my son was 16 months old, I wept, I couldn't stop. The fear was too great, it kept me up at night. During the day, I would catch myself, watch that door waiting for that knock. Looking at that baby gate, thinking, how the hell was I going to put it up? Capable of leaving my house on my own, let alone empty out the garbage. Thinking of Star, unable to go down to the laundromat because of lack of accessibility. She was me, and I had become her. All I could think was, those good enough reasons to remove a child, to remove my child. No one came, no one. Nobody ever knocked at my door. Nobody ever called my house. I was a single mother with a recent acquired disability scrambling to keep it together. And society had determined without needing me, without even asking me that my son was going to be safe in my care. And even though it baffled me, deep down, I knew why. If I am similar to the parents I worked with, I am also quite different. I own a house in a family-oriented neighborhood. I have a large network of support and I am a well-educated white woman. But I couldn't speak of this injustice not yet, as I still felt I needed to hide, just in case they would change their minds about me. Rendered voiceless by the fear and the guilt of being protected, yet happy that my son was in my care, no matter the reason. If we want the world to change, we need to be part of the solution. And for me, it is to show that disability alone does not impede parenting. But lack of accessible housing, lack of accessible jobs, and biased attitudes do. When we have a chance to be heard, we need to take a stand to make sure that everyone is invited around the table and has a dedicated seat so that someone like Star never goes unheard again. Our voices rising together towards justice and equity.